The DeAndre Jordan slander was thick last night on NBA Twitter. It was also being slathered all over the place on TV. We're told it just got tweeted out that DeAndre Jordan will get the start. Okay. <laughs> He's still alive. And a quick glance at the box score, you might actually believe that DeAndre Jordan is the worst player in the NBA. But was that really the case? Can we heap all the criticism on Doc Rivers for playing a guy in his 14th year because his leading MVP candidate got injured? It's time to look at the actual game film and go over each possession he was directly involved in to figure out whether he deserved all the insults and outrage, or whether fans get trapped in BS narratives by people who don't have an intrinsic understanding of the game. Early in the first, the Heat want to test DJ out and see what resistance he can offer in the pick and roll. This is called drop coverage, and he's trying to lure Jimmy into taking a long two-point shot hopefully with Tobias flying by to contest. He does a good job of being big and preventing a roll pass to Bam. This flows into a post up and again, he's physical, forces Bam from eight feet from the basket to 12 feet and contests this turnaround jumper very well, but Bam gets a crazy six bounce roll into the hoop. Next up, the Heat want to pressure the Sixers full court while denying Harden the ball. Tobias gets down the court with Jimmy on his hip Bam has to step up to help on the drive, and it's a nice lob and solid throwdown for Jordan. More good drop coverage. This is exactly how he's supposed to play it, by staying in front of the ball while also not letting Bam get below him. It's Harden who is in awful position on the block, giving 17 feet of space to a guy who can only shoot from the corners. Next up, Harden goes into his ISO dance, finding a small seam to his right. Now, we see Jordan drop this pass out of bounds, and it's a bad play to be sure, but it also wasn't going to be a scoring opportunity for him, so I think there were better decisions Harden could have made. More drop coverage, and again, this is exactly how the big who's used to blocking shots should play this. He opens up to let Jimmy get in the air, then pressures him into a bad miss. It's Maxi's job on the weak side to rotate over and box out. Now, I don't know if he'd ever have a chance against Bam, but had he tried to get better position, maybe they call a loose ball foul on Adebayo. Either way, this isn't really on Jordan. While the double ball screen wasn't effective for the Heat, it's when Bam cuts down and then back up that gets DJ a step behind the play. He's in good position for a drop here, Harden is even pressuring the ball well, but sometimes these damn guys on offense make awesome plays, and this one would have been tough for Bill Russell to guard. With the inside ball screen, Harris draws both defenders. All he has to do is dump it off to DJ, who's rolling free to the hoop for a dunk. Instead, he loses it out of bounds, trying to either get to the basket himself or throw it to Maxi on the weak side. On this play, they get an advantage when Danny Green screens and pops as both defenders go to Harden. However, I have a one dribble rule for Green. Anything more than that usually leads to disaster. He throws an alley-oop to a player who is not even close to being open for it, and it directly causes DJ to commit a turnover with the offensive foul. Despite having a size advantage on Max Struess, it's simply not Jordan's role to command a low post touch. He's there to hover around the basket and wait for things like this, the miss by Harden on the drive, and the strong dunk on the finish. Hero was killing the Sixers, so Jordan shows his chest for a couple of steps before sinking back down to Bam on the block. With the low post split, Green and Harden royally screw this up, both going to the cutter and leaving Tucker open in the lane. Jordan is responsible for cleaning up any shots on his side of the hoop, but once Harris picks up Tucker, Maxi is supposed to bump down and get a body on Jimmy. That doesn't happen, and they get a putback to cut the Sixers' lead to three. At this point, I'm still upset over all the roasting DeAndre Jordan took from Game 1. And that reminds me of the country's best roasters that have partnered with Trade Coffee to bring you the freshest and best tasting coffee delivered right to your door. After filling out their taste quiz, I've been blown away with how well they've matched their coffee choices with my taste. Everyone has been a surprising burst of perfect flavors suited to me specifically, and I look forward to each new delivery. Their human algorithm and army of taste testers will definitely find the perfect coffee for you, and with their trade match guarantee, if you don't like the first bag they send you, they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send a brand new bag for free. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash bball. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash bball and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. And don't forget about Mother's Day coming up. 
A trade subscription is the perfect gift for the coffee lovers in your life. So many of the issues for the Sixers were unrelated to DeAndre Jordan, and I hope you're beginning to see why the criticism was unwarranted. For instance, both Danny Green and Tyrese Maxey are the two safety valves getting back after the hardened miss. None of them realized Tucker was running along the left sideline as he gets the long pass in the corner for a wide open shot from the only place on the court he can shoot from. This one was tough for DJ, as Vincent cuts through but then suddenly stops to set a ball screen. It's not called out, he can't get around in time, and is forced to foul. On this pick and roll, most big men would definitely think that when the ball handler gets in the air with the ball in this position, behind his head and both hands on it, that he's kicking it to the corner. I don't blame Jordan for not trying to snatch this pass thrown directly over his head as it rolls out of bounds for a turnover by Maxi. Meanwhile, he's out here doing all the little things nobody notices, nice traditional box out of his man, then goes after the ball to finish the possession as a stop for the defense. As the game started slipping away, this play was shaping up to be a nice little lob for a dunk for Jordan, right until the point where Tobias Harris steps out of bounds for no reason. On the fabled Vincent Tucker pick and roll, both defenders go to the ball handler, Tucker gets the short roll, and DeAndre properly steps up to stop the ball. Could he have deflected this chest pass? Maybe. Could Harris have rotated down earlier? Definitely. And Bam gets the dunk. This looks like DeAndre Jordan wanted to complete the pistol action with an inside ball screen after the handoff to Harden. Niang tells him to get out of there, Harden patiently waits, and they generate an open corner three when Tucker is too close to the ball to recover, but Niang can't make them pay. Now, Jordan hustles back down court, Bam quickly sets the ball screen, and let's look at this from DJ's perspective. Having Gabe Vincent shoot a long two, considering he's shooting two for six at this point in the game, isn't a bad idea at all. Harden has a poor job of getting around the screen to offer any kind of contest, and he hops into an open 17-footer. Out of the 2-3 zone, Jordan holds his position in the middle and does an excellent job making Jimmy think he's got space to get this off, only to slap it right back in his face. Now, this is a zone, so it's harder to box out, and while he doesn't get inside position, it doesn't hurt them in the slightest. Back in the zone, he does a nice job staying down in the shot bake and deterring a drive. With two defenders down low to box out Jimmy, you might excuse DJ not crashing hard to the front of the rim. Niang does a poor job keeping Butler off the boards, and the Heat reset their attack by slipping this step-up screen to Hero. This is perfect drop position. He's containing the ball, Harden is right alongside, and Ban doesn't get below Jordan. He then does a nice job to pressure this into a tough pass, awful closeout by Harris, not much better from Niang, and somehow Vincent gets the and one through no fault of DeAndre Jordan. Here's more great drop defense, luring Hero into the dreaded mid-range, moving well to contest this in the air within an inch of blocking it, and Hero hits an extremely tough shot through no fault of Jordan's. As Miami begins to stretch their lead here, Niang and Maxi utterly blow this pick and pop by Hero. Nothing DJ can do except watch Tyler tee this up from out top completely wide open. The Sixers are able to go the Heat into another long two, and not only does Jordan block out his man, but he draws the loose ball fall on him too. Another example of perfect drop coverage by DeAndre, as he contains the ball, keeps Deadman in front of him, and then cuts him off at the block and swats away this attempt at a jump hook, with the Sixers recovering the ball. In transition, he has to pick up Oladipo, and as penetration happens, it's Jordan's job to rotate over as the lowest man on defense. This is unquestionably Harden's job to X out to the corner. He's way late, but they escape without getting burned. Another successful drop coverage allows Thibault to recover back to the ball and force the miss, but Jordan doesn't get great position on Bam, Thibault really is the culprit as he doesn't box out, and Hero gets the putback. Back in their zone again, and this time Jordan is too slow rotating back to cover the dunker spot. Harris covers for him by rotating all the way over from the other side to force the miss, but Jordan should have been more aggressive to grab this rebound. At this point, Hero is 3 for 4 from beyond the arc with a team high 22 points, so it's totally understandable that Jordan wants to contest a potential open shot out top. Great read by Hero to hit the diving bam, Harden gets there, but protecting the rim just isn't his thing. And after this terrible pass leads to a turnover, DJ puts his head down a couple of times in the way up court. But that's no big deal, considering Struess has been his man. 
Maxi needs to realize he's guarding Hero. Hero's right in front of him. No one else is near Hero, but instead, he decides to guard Struis as well, and it leads to Hero being wide open. Make no mistake, this is on Maxi, and the Sixers never really threatened as they yanked DeAndre for the rest of the game. So be careful when you read tweets or watch analysts ripping players to shreds like this. They might be right sometimes, but without the proper eye, it's easy for them to make the kind of assumptions that turn whole fan bases against certain players. Now, I'm not going to say DeAndre Jordan is their hero and savior, or that he's even a very good player at this point. I'll be the first to point out his deficiencies. Uh, we like DJ, we're going to keep starting him, whether you like it or not. Um, that's what we're going to do, because uh, our guys believe in him. There have been lots of times when we can make fun of Doc and his answers to reporters, but I gotta tell you, I totally agree with him on this one. Nothing about the way Jordan played last night should affect his minutes going forward. There are plenty of other players you can point your finger at. But it's not okay for the mob mentality to take over and lay blame on one player when clearly he had very little to do with why the Sixers lost this game. A really good, good game because He's playing against, uh, De uh, De I mean, I forget his name. DeAndre Jordan. Yes, he's playing against him, and he, <laughs> and he you know, DeAndre's a real. He's been a heck of a player, but he's cooked right now.